Welcome everyone to my YouTube channel. This is International Master William Pascal. Today we have an exciting game from the Aeroflot Open 2016 for you to peruse. Very exciting tournament, lots of fighting play. And this time we're going to look at two lesser known Grandmasters fighting it out. The Chinese Grandmaster Wen, who I'm not familiar with, W-E-N, and Grandmaster Artemiev, both rated just around 2600. This is a round two battle from the Aeroflot Open. So Wen plays e4, Artemiev c5, now knight to c3, the closed Sicilian, although this move can also be used for transpositional purposes. Now, Artemiev plays a line that's been pretty heavily recommended by a lot of authors, a6. It's also a good transpositional move. But in order to play this, you have to be willing to play a mainline Sicilian that involves the move, a6, generally speaking. So g3 by white. And there are other move orders here. I mean, obviously, you can play a Grand Prix attack. And knight on g to e2, I think, statistically has the best score for white. But when plays it sort of straight up with the most popular move, g3, and then b5. This is almost universally played for black. Now bishop g2, bishop b7, and, and here white has some choices. Um, he could play knight on g to e2, as aforementioned. Um, also f4 is an interesting move order for white. But white plays kind of classical Spassky-esque d3. And when you think of strong players who played the closed Sicilian, there's only a few really that come to mind. In the older generation, you have Smyslav, and Boris Spassky and in recent years not a lot of specialist players I mean there's some lesser grandmasters of the top elite grandmasters I mean really only Nigel Short comes to mind as playing the close Sicilian on a high level black now with e6 and in that position you could use a move order based on knight f6 as well e6 and now knight h3 there are various setups way can use but knight h3 is a kind of move that just puts the knight on a square where it doesn't get on the way. Um, it doesn't get in the way and it, it can get into play very quickly with white playing f4, f5, and the knight coming to f4, possibly to g5. It doesn't get in the way of the other knight retreating back to e2. It doesn't get in the way of the white rook along the f file. It kind of reminds me of playing knight a6 in the, in the king's indian, basically. Uh, the way that knight a6 in the king's indian sort of superseded um, knight d7 we could see the same kind of thing here where it sort of supersedes the more classical knight on g to e2 in this type of position now some aggressive players have played extremely sharply with h5 here and i think that's interesting andre can played that and uh, if you wanted to just play for the initiative i guess h5 is is probably one way to go although um it's possible it's not really strategically correct for black to be weakening himself on the side of the board where white is stronger. But um, h5 is certainly a macho move. But here Artemiev played uh, kind of normal setup with d6. I think it's um, knight f6 is fine. I found some games in the database. Theoretician, for example, like Lubomir Fatochnik played knight f6, but then later transposed anyway. So I'm not sure that um, <clears throat> there's really a big difference between knight f6 and d6. Black wants to play a flexible sort of hedgehog type of setup, not uh, d5 early. So d6, and then castles for white, knight f6 for black, f4. And the classical plan in these kind of positions is to play f5 for white. Black, for his part, um, may need to retreat his knight from f6 to d7 at some point. So the queen's knight goes to c6. And in this position, we've seen quite a few games in the database. Um, white playing f5 and knight f2 in most of those. But I did find an interesting game, which might be something to make a note of. There was a game in the 14th Asian Continental Championship which was a closed Sicilian. This is not the same player, but notably it was two Chinese players, Wang Chen against Chu Wei Chao. Wang Chen rated 25-24. This was played recently, um, August 2016. 
2015, and Wang Chen played knight f2. He ended up winning that game. But I'm just curious how well the Chinese players, for example, keep track of each other's games, and if they possibly you know, share opening analysis. I mean, this is not a really common line. So I would think that a game played by a fellow Chinese player over 2,500 in an Asian championship like that would probably be noticed by someone here like Wen. Possible he um, analyzed that game and found an improvement because bishop e3 in this position is a new move and it's it's really it's close to the evaluation of f5 if you look at it with a strong computer engine but it poses a very big trap for black that Artemiev fell into here so I think that black has to play queen c7 in this position and after queen c7 um, I think it's kind of a normal position. Queen c7, f5, b4, and then we could play knight a4. It feels a little lonely out there. Most players would lean toward knight e2, staying in the center. And then the key idea for black in all these lines when white plays f5 seems to be to take on f5, which cuts down on white's central superiority. Either way, white captures. If he takes the pawn, he loses his pawn superiority. He takes with the rook. It's a little better positionally, I would think, the rook capture. But um, it looks like black is close to equal. After something like rook takes f5, bishop e7, white doesn't have any real pawn breaks, and potentially black could get in d5 later, but he has a pretty solid position. So I don't know which way to recapture here with white, but I don't think white has a serious advantage uh, after queen c7, f5 b4, knight e2, e takes f5. Going back to the game, um, bishop e7, which is a very natural move, we're usually worried about f5 for white. So there is this thing in, in the Sicilian, in the closed Sicilian, where sometimes white gets in e5. But oftentimes that's when black fianchettos on the king's side has a bishop on g7, and the c5 pawn is kind of weak. I mean, Spassky used this kind of break in the closed Sicilian many, many years ago in the 60s, with situations in, in the structure where there's a pawn on g6. But here it turns out that e5 is very, very strong. Um, right here with the bishop on e7, and the c5 pawn is, is fairly well guarded. So it's just an amazing tactical resource. And I think that, I don't believe that that um, Grandmaster Wen here came up with this over the board. Um, it just all seems like too perfect, too well prepared. I'm thinking this was kind of like a deep preparation that maybe his fellow Chinese grandmasters found or they they work together with a lot of computer analysis because I mean this position has never been played before and it all just seems to work out very very well for white basically like a forced win um, very little black can do I mean knight d7 is playable but it's, it's horrible for black giving up control of e4 so he takes on e5 and then f takes e5, and you can't take on e5, so naturally knight d7 is basically um, the only good move. And now is interesting, because if you put this on a computer engine like quickly, um, I think most of them are going to come up with queen h5 here, which is a scary move for black, and it basically prevents black from taking back. But in this line, after queen h5, I think um, castles for black, knight e4, Knight takes e5. I looked at this. Knight takes c5. And now black has queen b6, which is an amazing move. Defending the bishop on b7 and pinning the knight to the bishop on e3 on the g1 b6 diagonal. So now knight g5, I think something like that, and h6. But it appears that white sort of runs out of steam. Um, the position is basically about equal. There's some very complicated lines after, I think, knight on e4 here, where maybe white could sack a piece in some lines, but it's very complicated. So queen h5, um, the jury's kind of out on that. Queen g4, however, seems extremely strong to basically win by force in this position. More or less, queen g4 wins by force. And uh, it's just a question of you know how, how well Artemiev can try to come close to some sort of defense. After queen to g4, 
Um, castles might be the best move. It is the best move, basically. Castles and um, you lose an exchange after castles. Bishop h6, g6, bishop takes f8, queen takes f8. And this pawn on e5 is very weak. The pawn on e5 here. So more or less black will win that back. I looked at the following line. Queen f4. And black can take the pawn with knight on d takes e5. Then rook e1. Making life very difficult for black. And now f6. Knight e4. King g7. Defending f6. Defending everything. But black here has only a pawn for the exchange. And I'm not really... I'm not really sure that it's enough compensation. I mean, it's not really objectively enough compensation, but it's the best he can do. So after queen g4, if he's lucky, he can get a pawn back. He could instead try to play more positionally. Um, queen, not queen h5, but queen g4 here, and play castles, bishop h6, g6, bishop takes f8, queen takes f8. Queen f4, instead of taking the pawn, when we have this variation I just showed you, um, black could try queen g7 and not taking the pawn right away to try to not have to play f6 for black may be more interesting than, than trying to win the pawn right, right away. Um, black is down the exchange, but he has some compensation. And the white knights in particular are very difficult to, to kind of get in the game. So maybe this was the best chance. Um, queen g4, and then g6. You can't take on e5 because the queen takes g7. Um, now, I don't know what black really was thinking here, but if you look at the position, you know, maybe you think, oh, well, he could try like bishop h6 or something weird like that. But basically the pawn is just hanging on e5, a kind of critical pawn, and I think you know that something's up. So rook takes f7. I, I just kind of have the feeling that this was home preparation. I mean, it's unlikely that white would be able to calculate all these lines clearly um, over the board in such an early stage. To use up so much time on an early stage sacrifice like this without knowing it just works, um, I have doubts about that. I had the feeling that this was probably analyzed in advance in, uh, at some point. If not, then kudos to White, who played a tremendous, like, intuitive sacrifice here. Rook takes f7. King takes f7. The alternative might be a little better for black. Knight on c takes uh, e5. This is... Knight on c takes e5. Queen takes e6. And it's like a long-term rook sacrifice, basically. <laughs> Queen takes e6. This would be the analysis variation. Bishop takes g2. King takes g2, knight takes f7. You're basically down a rook for a pawn. But you have this crushing move, knight to d5. Threatening all sorts of things. I mean, mostly tying black's queen down to, to e7. And knight f8 is knight f6 mate. So knight d5. The best black could do in this line would have been castles. Knight takes e7 check, king h8. And then bishop takes c5, which is a very, very annoying move. Knight takes e5, queen f6, mate. And white is threatening the destructive bishop d4. So black is lost here, um, no matter what he does. After rook takes f7, king takes f7, rook f1, check. And then Artemi of here, I would kind of think he would run to g7, most practical players. But this is also lost. If king g7, and, and this is the thing about the sacrifice that bothers me, that makes me think it's prepared. Um, there are a lot of long lines where basically white has to find a series of like only moves and you know you would take a lot of time over the board to kind of work that out so I have the feeling this was really preparation king g7 queen takes e6 um, all right if king g7 knight f4 excuse me knight f4 and now this is analysis of what would happen if Artemiev had played king g7 which is very natural I mean white has to have this like prepared basically what is he going to do in the event of king g7 knight f4 knight f8 this is all forced like only moves knight h5 check king g8 and now you have to find this queen f4 threatening mate in one queen e8 basically only move and then to evaluate this position 
um, as just easily winning for white is not that basic. I mean, bishop takes f6, pawn takes f6, queen f7, and, you know, at this point, we're, we're down a lot of material with white. I mean, white is, is like, down a lot of material. Knight e4, knight d4, um, and the best I could come up with here is, we're threatening knight g5, obviously. So, that's going to win a queen. Bishop takes d4. Bishop takes e4. And now getting rid of that dangerous knight on e4. Bishop takes e4. Hitting the rook. And black can save the rook. Rook c8. Bishop e5. And rook d8. Bishop d6. This is as far as I got in my analysis. And uh, positionally white is winning. He's only down an exchange um, for a pawn. So material is okay. And positionally he's overwhelming. But I mean... Could could Wen really have worked this out all over the board? Just, you know, out of hand like that? I mean, I kind of doubt it, you know? I'm surprised that Artemio didn't go for King G7 because this wasn't that simple, actually. So in the actual game, um, King E8 was played, which looks a little more dangerous than King G7. And then, okay, it's hard to say. When you, when you get hit by a big sacrifice, sometimes you lose your objectivity. And maybe Artemio just kind of lost his objectivity here. Um, queen takes e6, but still there's some interesting chances here. Knight d takes e5. And now it was interesting because it's not clear that Wen played the best move concretely for white here. Um, I think most engines would have gone for bishop takes c6 check, which um, bishop takes c6 check. If bishop takes c6 check, it looks like um, we just take on e5 and we get the material to a point where you know we're down the exchange but the black king is in grave danger so I think here king d7 and knight d5 white has um, very strong very strong chances here after this continuation so Knight e4 was played instead. So again, bishop takes c6 check. Um, knight takes c6, just losing out of hand. Um, knight takes c6. This is another possibility. Knight e4 with a vicious attack, threatening knight f6 check and bishop h6, which is going to be basically over. The black queen doesn't really have any good squares to go to. So I don't know. Um, when you're going with knight e4, which is also very strong, Obviously, threatening huge things with knight f6 check. So, black has to create a square for the king at d8 with queen c7. And now the strongest with white, um, you know, this, I mean, certainly, mean, you know, white is, is not in a position where he's completely had it worked out beforehand here. He plays, like, the second best move. Knight on h to g5 would have been probably a little stronger Knight h g5, king d8. Um, and then huge positional sacrifice. And white has massive, massive threats. After knight takes c5, basically bishop takes c5, bishop takes c5, and knight d7. And I looked at knight f7 check, king c8, and we get the material back with knight takes h8. And you can see that white is just two pawns up here. So knight h g5, um, the only other line that that could have been played really and it looked a bit stronger than knight f4 the knight f4 is is good too uh, i think artemiev did miss the best opportunity he blundered here with in the scary position he's up a rook but he's just facing like terrible threats he makes a very natural blunder bishop to c8 here like undeveloping because the queen is so threatening on e6 but he could have played king d8 which kind of makes sense because this is where you know, he's going to be headed in any case. So king d8 looks like the best try. King d8, and then knight takes c5, similar to the last line. Bishop takes c5, and the point now is that white has this move queen f6 check. Queen f6 check, and it's... Um, now, if, if king d7, bishop takes c5 is very strong. So you basically have to play king c8 and queen takes h8 check, knight d8, and I analyze this, it's not that simple. 
Black almost uh, hangs in there here. Knight d8, d4. Knight f7, queen takes h7. And queen e7, giving the king some space, hitting a bishop with check. Something like king f2, bishop takes g2, knight takes g2. The king has a little cubby hole, bishop b6, king cubby hole at b7. Queen takes g6, so this is as far as I got in my analysis. And uh, not that, but king b7. And now c3, getting the rook in the game, rook c8, knight f4, rook c6, and queen d3. And this is, I think, the best series of moves for both sides. When, with best play, when has four pawns for, for a sacrificed piece. Four pawns for a knight. I mean, theoretically, it's winning for white. But over the board, I guess, he's pretty passive and his king is somewhat exposed. White's king is a little bit exposed too. I think that Artemia would have had some practical chances. So back to the game. King d8 here in this position is right, really black's only try. You could make another move like rook b8 or something, but bishop c8, an understandable move, loses by force because of a very nasty trick. Um, knight f6 check, king d8, and now queen d5 check. And I think this must have been, is possibly why Artemiev went with the king in this direction in the first place. If he had seen a line like this, it would be very easy to miss what happened here. So you're, you're not really looking for mates with bishop and knight, but this is one of those situations where it happens. He could have played bishop d6, but after bishop d6, um, knight e4 is just basically winning by force. So... You can't play king e7 because of knight takes d6 and bishop takes c5. Basically, black's kind of in middle game Zugzwang here after knight e4. So he played queen d6, which looks reasonable until you see this move, bishop takes c5, which just wins a queen. And this is probably what Artemiev overlooked who knows how many moves ago. If queen takes d5, bishop b6 mate. And... This is the kind of line you could easily overlook. I mean, five or six moves in advance, you maybe thought, oh, I have queen takes d5 in that position, everything's okay. It's not, because of bishop b6 mate. So this funny mate with the bishop on b6 and knight on f6, really, really amazing game by when. I mean, I'd like to know how much of this was, like, preparation. And, um, I mean, it's such a rare position, really. Not, not that deep, though, about nine moves into the opening with bishop e3, which is apparently a new move. Um, not something you're going to get to play every day, but uh, definitely preparation, improvement on theory with, with 9 bishop to e3, and a fantastic combinational game based on rook takes f7. Credit to Grandmaster Wen, who is starting the air flat open with 2 out of 2. So we'll see how he goes throughout the event. Again, this was the game Wen versus Artemia for round 2 in the air flat 2016 tournament. Thanks for joining me here for Grandmaster Chess Lessons Part 3. I'm International Master William Pascal for video chess training, my channel on YouTube. Bye-bye, guys.